Howdy folks, welcome to lesson 10 of the CompTIA Network Plus course. Today's video is titled Networking with IP version 4 and you'll probably notice this is quite a short video. So in this video we're going to get you guys started with IP addresses. There's going to be other videos as well covering this topic. This is just to get the ball rolling. And in each video where we cover IP addresses we're going to go deeper and deeper and cover more and more. Alright, so let's go and start learning about IP addresses. Right, folks, so what is an IP address? I think that is a good place to start, is to ask the question, what actually is an IP address? Well, folks, an IP address is a unique address that identifies a device on the internet or a local network. So if you don't know already, you can think of this as your house address. Probably not the best example I've come up with in my years, but it's pretty much the same as your house address. So if you want to invite me to your house for a cup of coffee, I need to know what country you're in, maybe what state or province you're in. I need to know, you know, what region or town you're in, suburb, street address, uh, maybe street number or house number. If you're staying in a complex or something, I need to know your unit number. At the end of the day, I'm going to end up at your door. I'm going to knock on the door and I'm going to be for my cup of coffee. So for me to be able to do that, you need to give me an address. Now, computers work similar to that, guys, in case you didn't know. Computers work with what we call IP addresses. It is how one device is able to find another device on a network. You'll notice I'm saying devices because this is unfortunately not limited to just desktops and laptops these days. Almost anything and everything on a network these days uses an IP address and a MAC address. So this can be laptops, desktops, tablets, phones, printers, scanners, access points, firewalls, and the list obviously goes on much, much longer. Now, in case you guys didn't know, IP actually stands for something. So IP is short for Internet Protocol. Yep, who knew, right? And this thing called an IP address allows information to be sent between devices on a network. Assuming, of course, you've done a configuration correct. Not something we're going to go too deep in today, because today the topic is just to explain what an IP address is, not too much how to go and configure it. That's going to be the following lessons. But an IP address essentially allows one device to be able to communicate with another device, assuming they're on the same network, or at least they normally have to be on the same network. And of course, assuming the configuration has been done correctly and that nothing is blocking them. An example of an IP address would be something like the following. So I'm going to type IP there for you guys. There is an example of a completely and totally random IP address. 192.168.1.15 Now what you'll notice is it's quite common for IP addresses to start off 192.168, but it's actually not limited to that. So that'll basically kind of sort of determine what class of IP address you're dealing with. Whether you're dealing with class C, B, or A. And that's not something you guys need to worry about right now in this particular video. That's going to be covered in a later lesson, which we're obviously going to go into a lot more detail of that. But for now, I'm just going to say, that is my IP address. You will notice it consists of four octets. There's four octets. So the 192, that's one octet. The 168 is the second. The one is the third. And the 15 there is the fourth octet. If you look at IP version 6, which is not the topic here right now, obviously that's going to look completely different to this, and it's going to be way more complex to this. Now, if you were to go and actually type in an IP address on a machine, and you were to go click on the second block directly below that, you'll notice the second block directly below that, if you ever were to go do this on a machine, it would normally say subnet mask. And if you click on that, depending on the IP address you've typed in at the top, It'll auto-complete that of 22555.0 or 22555.0.0 or last but not least, just 255.0.0.0. That determines what kind of IP address you're using. Is it class C, B, or A? If you're going to type something like 192.168. let's say 0, that is by default seen as class C. Doesn't have to be. You can always go and change it. You can force it. It's just something I'm mentioning. 
And if you, for example, start your IP address of 172.16.something.something, that by default would normally be seen as a class B, but you can change it to class A or C as well. And if you, for example, start of 10.0.0.0, that would normally by default be seen as class A, also not set in stone. Now, if you don't actually know what the subnet mask is, you know, besides us having to cover this later in a later lesson, that in a nutshell just determines the size of your network and how many times it has been subdivided, if I have to summarize this in a nutshell. So if you have, for example, a 22552.0 subnet, that means you've got a network that's got a maximum of 256 IP addresses, of which 254 are actually usable. You can normally not use the first one, or the last one. So that means we've got 254 usable IP addresses and only 254 devices can connect on that network. And then if you go and connect number 255, 256 and so on and so forth, those devices will not have IP addresses and they will not be able to exchange information and communicate on that network. So if you want to be able to connect more than 254 devices, you're going to have to go to class B territory, which is 2255 something. And class B normally has roughly about 16,000 odd IP addresses available. Instead of 254, it's 16,000 odd, which is just crazy. And if you were to go look at class A, something we'll discuss later, it's got about 16 million odd IP addresses. Crazy, isn't it? Something else you guys will see if you were to go type in an IP address and subdate mask, there's a third block that says default gateway. That is the IP address of the first device your device has to go through to get to the outside world. So if you're using a laptop or a desktop, for example, what is the first device your desktop or laptop has to go through to get to the outside world or to get to another network? That is normally the default gateway. It's not guaranteed to be the gateway. The gateway is definitely something you're going to have to go through to get to the outside world, but it's not always the first or the only device. If you look at a small office, home office environment, or just your home environment in generally, the only device and the first device will be your router. But if you look at a, an average medium to large size company, yes, there's going to be a router you're going to have to go through to get to the outside world, but it might not be the only device. There might be a couple of other devices like servers and firewalls, firewalls being a very common one. So the average IP address for the average router will normally be 192.168.1.1 or .0.1 at the end. Now you can go and change that. Just know that. You can actually log into the router. You're going to go open a browser, any browser of your choice. And assuming you're on the same network as that router, you go to the address bar where you would normally type in a URL. In other words, where you would normally go type www.google.com or .youtube.com. You go there, you type the IP address of your router, which is probably going to be 192.168.0.1 or 1.1. And you're going to find you're going to land on what we call a splash page. It's like the home page for your router. It's going to ask you for a username and a password. It's probably going to be on the default in the beginning. Username is normally admin in the beginning and the password is normally blank or admin as well. Um, it's very advisable for you to go and change that default password. And you might want to go and change that default IP address as well in some cases, depending on how big your network is. All right, so that is the first device your device has to go through to get to the outside world. You're basically telling your laptop or desktop what door it has to use to get out of your house. And then the last kind of sort of thing I want to mention to you folks is preferred DNS. Now the DNS, something we'll cover later as well in this course, is basically a server that converts names to IPs and IPs to names. It's absolutely not the only thing it does. It does much, much, much more than that. But in a nutshell, the DNS is something that converts IPs to names and names to IPs. So if you go to your browser and you type in YouTube.com, believe it or not, your machine does not actually know what YouTube is or where that is. So the very first time you type that into your browser, your machine is actually going to contact something called the DNS and it's going to say, hey, listen, my bra, I don't know what this is or where this is, but my user wants to go to this place. Can you hook me up? And the DNS is going to basically go through the yellow page. It's like a phone book. It's not really what it does. But it's going to go and look up a record for that website called YouTube.com. So it's kind of like when you go to the doctor and if you've been there before, they're going to ask you what's your name or your last name. They're going to go pull your record or your medical file. And you're going to possibly take that to the doctor so they can see what other things they've, they've done before. You know, what medicine they've given you, what you've come in for in the past, your whole medical pedigree. Are you allergic to anything? Anything like that. 
So you're gonna go and pull the records. Your DNS is gonna go and pull a record for YouTube.com or whatever site you wanna go and visit. And in that record, the DNS will see the IP address for YouTube.com and that it will give to your machine and your machine will use that to load the website for the user. Pretty cool, right? Now, in reality, you could probably go to your browser and just type in the IP address for YouTube.com and it's still going to load, but nobody's going to do that because it's impossible for us to remember the IP address for each and every freaking website we've got to go to. So some clever oak out there once upon a time said, you know what? What if we design something, in this case it's DNS, that does this automatically for the user? It will go and look up the IP address. So you as the user, you just get to type in something user-friendly like YouTube.com, Google.com, Facebook.com, whatever. You get to type in something user-friendly and your machine will do everything in the background. Now, in case you don't know, the DNS is no longer on-premises for most companies. You can have an actual DNS server on-premises, not something you'll see very commonly in a home environment or a small office environment. It's almost never going to be seen in those environments. The only place you might see a DNS server, an actual DNS server, is in a medium-sized company or a big company. And even those don't have their own DNS they'll use what we call public DNS servers, like Google. Google has a public DNS server, and um, if you're wondering what that DNS server IP address is, it's actually 8.8.8.8. .8 that is the main IP address we tend to go and use. So if you need to go and use a DNS server, um, you can just go and type in, you know, 4 eights, or you can go and type in 8.8.4.4. .4. That's also, that's the alternative IP address for Google's DNS server. A lot of companies use that. So if they don't have their own DNS server and they need one, just go type in Google's one and that'll do just fine. All right, folks, I hope you've learned something in this lesson. Hopefully you know a little bit more about IP addresses. There's obviously going to be way more videos about IP addresses, so stay tuned for that. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a like. It does help the channel when you guys do that. And I do also appreciate it, of course. If you'd like to know when lesson 11 goes live or any other lesson for that matter, maybe consider subscribing. Just a shout out like usual to all the sponsors and, you know, supporters of this channel. Thank you very much, guys. Um, I appreciate all of you guys clicking on the thanks button below the video if it's there. Um, if you guys want to support the channel, you can find all that information below in the video description. And um, on that note, here is a list of some of the Patreon sponsors. Thank you very much, guys. I appreciate you guys sponsoring the channel. And here's a list of PayPal supporters. Thank you very much, guys. And then last but not least, for those of you that don't know yet, the channel does have a Discord server. It's called Free IT Training. The link is in the video description. It's going to be the last link in the video description. It's literally at the way at the bottom of the video description. Just go check it out there if you want to go check that out as well. All right, folks, I will see you in lesson 11 of the networking course.